Hello and welcome to another update video from Wear a Museum. Now, as you can see, we are now on YouTube. Now this means that you can view all our past videos. Um, we are just in the process of uploading them at the moment. Um, and if you press the follow button, you will also be notified of when we publish new videos as well. So we realise that not everyone has access to Facebook where we were previously uh, publishing our videos. So we've popped them all onto a platform that's a little bit more accessible to everyone. I say we, it's still only me in this museum. Still pretty lonely. Hopefully that's not going to be for much longer. Although saying that, this is a very lovely excuse to have. It's the end of half term. If anyone else there is watching this when you've got children, you will understand how much this little hour by myself talking to myself or talking to all of you on YouTube um, it's a moment of calm it's very nice anyway I digress so this week I wanted to show to you um, one or two of my favorite items um, within our collection that's on display now these items they're not particularly old some people might not even find them that interesting. Um, some of them are a bit plain. However, I find them fascinating. And I'm going to show one to you now. And it may be quite familiar to some of you as well. There we go. Now, I, I'm sure there's a couple of people going, oh, I've got one of those on my house. You probably have, right above your front door, probably. So, this is a fire insurance plant. Now, pre-National Fire Brigade, all the fire service was owned by insurance companies. So if you had a fire, it would be your insurance company, Fire Brigade, that would come out to put out the fire. So you needed to have the right plug on the front of your house for them to put out the fire. So incredibly important. I want to show you another example. Now this isn't a local example, um, but it gives a little bit more detail. It's quite heavy. This is a, one made of lead. So this is rather nice. This is the Sun Insurance. And as you can see along the bottom here is a number. Now this would have been the insurance number. So they would have been able to go, yep, that's the right insurance number for that building. Yep, we can put out your fire. Yeah, scary times really, isn't it? So this would have been sort of 18th century and very important. So as I said, you can still see a lot of these around Wareham. So a little task for you this week. When you are going out for your daily walk, so still in lockdown, still go for a nice daily walk especially with the sun shining at the moment i want you to have a look at our buildings in the town and see how many of these you can spot you might be surprised at how many are still on buildings but also have a look and see if you can spot some different designs i know of a couple of different designs see which ones you can spot um, maybe take a picture pop it in the comments um, share it with us so we can see um, what you found. So why has Wareham got so many um, fire insurance blocks? Why would they deem to be such a necessity? So this stems from our great fire of Wareham uh, which was in 1762. Now it said that it started, well we know it started in the Bull's Head Inn which uh, is just across the road from the museum on the other side of the crossroads and apparently a maid was emptying out the ashes from the fires or all the fires from the night before and unfortunately they were still hot and uh, it caught fire to the rubbish heap that was next to it and then this fire spread. Now the day that the fire happened is very significant because it was a Sunday. So this was the 25th of July, 1762, and it was a Sunday morning. So not many people were about. Um, obviously a Sunday morning, 1762, 
quite a lot of people would have been in church. Now this was fortunate because it meant that um, the fire didn't claim any lives, um, which is amazing with a fire of this size. Uh, but it also meant that it didn't get detected as early as perhaps it should have done, so it spread um, before it was detected. And it spread up one side of the town, then unfortunately the wind changed direction and it spread down the other side of the town. Um, and then thankfully by 7pm of that evening um, it had dispersed itself, it had been got under control. However, it had caused a huge amount of damage. So where I'm at that time, if you look at our crossroads, they're, the roads are very widely spaced now. It wouldn't have been like that uh, pre-fire. Uh, they would have been a lot narrower and we used to have a shambles running down the middle. Now a shambles is a collection of buildings. Um, they're very closely built together so the roofs would have been literally touching each other. Uh, they'll be mostly made out of uh, wooden structures uh, with thatch so a fire can spread incredibly quickly through them. Um, within the shambles you would have had all the trades of Wareham, all your shops and also it would have been the homes of the tradespeople as well. So very important buildings but also very um, vulnerable to a fire. So the fire spread through the shambles, spread through a large part of Wareham. So by the evening of 1762 a lot of the Wareham town folk were unfortunately homeless. Um, while you're out on your walk, I want you to have a look at St Martin's Church and have a look at the roof uh, because there's something unusual up there that you wouldn't normally see on a church and that is a chimney. So over the winter of 1762-1763 there were still families that were homeless and they were being homed in St Martin's Church. And obviously with the cold winter, etc, you need fire to keep you warm. And a fireplace was installed. And hence why we have a chimney on the roof of St Martin's Church. So keep an eye out for that one. So another thing you can keep an eye out for, uh, which you might not find that interesting, but give me a second, is bricks. <laughs> now, um, when Wareham was rebuilt, a lot of money uh, was needed for this and um, news travelled very quickly that this fire had happened. Uh, we got a lot of monetary support from the larger towns around Dorset um, and even the king sent money to Wareham as well. So money came in um, and obviously the materials that were bought to rebuild Wareham were of a similar nature. So if you start your walk at the Red Lion you will see that it has quite a distinctive Georgian brick style to it. Uh, as you go through the town you'll see that that continues in certain places and uh, that gives you a very good indication uh, that the building was rebuilt after the fire. Now I myself, I live in Mill Lane we have a little cottage and the front of our cottage is this very distinctive brickwork. Uh, the back of the cottage, however, is very large stones, real mishmash of shapes and sizes. So the back of the cottage is original pre-fire. Then part of the cottage was burnt down as part of the 1762 fire and the frontage was then put on as part of the big rebuild of the town. So, a couple of things there for you to look out for on your walks this week. How many of these can you spot? How many different ones can you spot? Um, there's lots of different designs all around the country. So maybe if you're not in Wareham, if you're watching this video from another part um, of the world, have a look out and see. See, look, there's another design there. So many different designs. Have a look, see which ones you can spot around your own town. It's usually the larger towns and cities um, that you will spy these. Have a look at St Martin's Church. Can you see the chimney 
that I, I was telling you about and have a look at the brickwork and tell me whether you can see that um, on some of our um, buildings through the centre of Wareham. So the last thing I want to share with you is a, oh, it's quite big, is this. Now this is a map of the town which was made for us here at the museum and it shows you in um, a lovely I say simplistic but it's not it's a, it's a very detailed map of the buildings that were damaged as part of the fire in 1762 so just to give you a bearing we are here at the crossroads you can see here the shambles running up the center of the town uh, coming all the way down here you can see all these buildings that were destroyed or partially destroyed by the fire. You can see how it's swept in different ways around heading down here. So obviously we've got the key area here and the church just down here. Oh, if I just turn it up here, because look, it's a lovely 3D model. So you can get a little bit of an idea of it all there. So obviously some of these buildings would have been saved because they had their fire insurance plant on the front of them and some of them would have been untouched because of the nature oh, I'm gonna say there we go uh, the nature of the building material as well so the fire would have spread a lot quickly through our timber buildings compared to some of our stone built buildings so yeah do have a look through town see what you can spot pop it on the comments below what you spotted and um, while on your daily walks and don't forget to follow us on youtube speak to you all soon